Hello, I'm Kate Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from ACS's 256th National Meeting and Exposition in Boston. We're joined today by Dr. Joel Coates from Iowa State University. He's studying next-gen insect repellents to combat mosquito-borne diseases. Dr. Coates? Thank you, Katie. I'm happy to be here and to tell you about our research, which focuses on natural insect repellents. We've been looking at the natural insect repellents for about 20 years, and we started by following some threads in folklore to determine if some of the older uh, materials really were repellent, um, how repellent, and uh, what's in them that is repellent. So we've started with catnip oil and determined what in catnip oil was repellent and how potent it was. And then the Osage orange was our next step, or hedge apple, and determined what kind of terpenes were in there and what was uh, repellent about that fruit. So overall, we've found that a lot of terpenes in plant essential oils are repellent. Some of them are not, some of them are actually attractant. But if we focus on the repellent ones, we found that some of the terpenes have a very significant repellency. We've looked at um, 100 oils or more and determined which ones are effective and which ones are um, less so, and then focused on the individual terpenes uh, and there are several of them you're probably familiar with. I have uh, menthol out of various mint essential oils and uh, citronellol out of oil of citronella. And uh, there are others, but these are very uh, effective but very short-lived. And we don't have uh, expectations of them lasting as long as would be desirable by CDC standards. So we've been working on synthesis of derivatives of these monoterpenes to enhance their capability of uh, repelling and enhance their physical chemical properties to, to uh, be repellent on a surface for a longer time or to be repellent in the air. And today I'm going to focus mostly on the spatial repellents it's a kind of different uh, concept for repellents. Most people think of putting DEET on your skin as a repellent, but burning citronella candle, candles or burning coils ha of pyrethroids have uh, also been uh, useful over the decades. So we're trying to find out uh, how could we better use spatial repellents or optimize the molecule to be an excellent spatial repellent as another tool in the box. The mosquitoes are getting scarier, whether it's Zika or West Nile virus or dengue or malaria or chikungunya. These are uh, serious times and we need some uh, serious tools in the toolbox to try to control these uh, insects or maintain uh, public health as best we can. So when we looked at the optimal physical chemical properties, we found a number of sesquiterpenes were more effective and uh, stayed around longer and so we designed some of the best monoterpenoids like citronellol and menthol to physical chemically look more like a sesquiterpene. So the next slide will show a couple of the examples here where from an alcohol or a uh, cyclic alcohol or from a um, phenol, if we derivatize with a an acid, small organic acid, we can create molecules, esters, that are much more favorable in terms of how they uh, affect repellency in the environment. So we've looked at uh, over 300 molecules in this way and optimized about uh, over the last two years how these materials are uh, 
used. Um, graduate students have been involved heavily, of course, in the research in both the synthesis and in the evaluation. And then in the feedback loop, of course, to iteratively uh, provide information for better and more uh, effective analogs. So we've looked at mosquitoes of several types. We've looked at um, other insects. We've looked at uh, ticks. Uh, ticks are getting a little scarier all the time also. And you um, might know that, note uh, DEET, for example, is, is not really particularly good against ticks. So we're trying to introduce this uh, terpene class as a third family of types of um, spatial repellents. So to go with the contact repellents or go with uh, ULV spraying in a neighborhood or in malaria country, maybe indoor residual spraying in the houses, um, a spatial repellent that would keep insects, mosquitoes in particular, out of a house or out of a horse barn uh, or out of the barracks would be uh, really excellent, I think. Uh, the grant that we've worked on on this one uh, is through the Department of Defense. They have great interest, of course, in maintaining uh, mosquito uh, populations under control all over the world. And um, so they don't lose people and days to mosquito-borne illnesses. So our uh, hope is that these will be valuable in that way. The, there's a company in uh, Riverside, California, ISCA Technologies, is our uh, collaborator on this project. And they uh, specialize in slow-release technologies. So for our terpenes that are volatile, um, we believe they'll be able to optimize the uh, release or emission of these materials into the air. So followed that citronella candle model, but we're looking now at more stable and more long-lasting kinds of repellency. So we're trying to optimize both how potent they are and secondly, uh, how long they will last as a repellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Bela? Well, wait for the microphone. It's coming. Uh, Bela Rustlegacy, yes. Um, I've noticed that uh, on, on your examples that the compounds you show were either alcohols or What about the hydrocarbon, the terpenoid hydrocarbons? I mean, in fact, there are thousands of terpenoids that uh, that, uh, that would be potential, even if, if you were only looking at the alcohols or, at, or the esters. Is there any particular characteristic that, uh, that uh, you found that, uh, that you need to repeat or, or, or try to, to modify to make sure that it works better? Or? OK. Yes, good question. We've uh, looked at quite a number of different materials and including the hydrocarbons. Uh, for example, when we looked at Osage Orange or Hedge Apple, we found 12 materials, terpenes, that we could capture in quantities enough or purchase or get out of other oils to do actual repellency testing. Six of those were hydrocarbons and none of those were repellent. And the other six that we tested were all alcohols, and they were all repellent. So there must be, uh, uh, I'd say, others <clears throat> as well. But when we have an ester or um, a ketone or an alcohol or an aldehyde, we often find good repellency. So there's apparently a favored um, position for a, an oxygen there to uh, be reacting at a receptor site, we would assume, but we don't know that. Now, the, when you looked at, uh, looked at this thing, well, obviously the alcohols, are, and you mentioned uh, sesquiterpenes. Have you turned diterpenes or, or triterpenes or something 
which uh, I just thinking about and would probably persist a little better longer. Uh, I mean, uh, the persistence is really, uh, really volatility related, so. Yes, primarily volatility. We have looked at one or two um, diterpenes with uh, zero effect in space, at least, and not very good in contact either. So, and we've, people have looked at triterpenes as well, and cester, and some of those are pretty important as anti-feedants in, uh, um, in certain plants, but others, um, as far as we've tested them, we've not seen promise there as, as repellents in the classical approach. Okay, question in the back. I'm Laura Cassidy with ACS. Uh, do you have any ideas as to why the mosquitoes don't like the new repellents, biochemically speaking? Okay, that's a good question too. We, we have uh, very little evidence of, uh, to, to build any argument on. There are several labs in the country that are trying to work at the receptor level, the odorant binding uh, protein or actual receptor, odorant receptor. Um, they, however, are mostly working on DEET and picaridin and others in that class or they're working on pyrethroid insecticides, which have quite a bit of repellency on them, uh, to them. And some of the, oh, the clip-on is an insecticide repellent, uh, but it also kills mosquitoes. So we don't uh, know, and we're now uh, trying to develop collaboration that will help us explore that uh, mechanism of action, or at least which site is important for optimizing these molecules for. Okay, um, and have you tested this on human skin yet? And if not, when do you think that would come? <laughs> uh, we have not done that. And of course, that's uh, ultimately pretty important. It's not uh, clear that these will be ever applied to human skin. Uh, but if they were used in some situations, they wouldn't need to be. They could be in a, a plastic or cloth material that may vaporize uh, the material or allow it to vaporize. Um, but there are just hundreds or thousands of plant essential oils that are used when you walk past Bed Bath and Beyond. You, you can smell all of them or even in the grocery store. So they're widely used in uh, the fragrance industry and the cosmetics and the food and drink industry. Mm -hmm. So we're assuming, hoping that they would be safe, but certainly there'll need to be some testing. Okay. Um, and how long right now do your repellents last? Well, we've tried two testing uh, sessions, a short-term that goes out to two hours and a half, and we've tried a, uh, a longer term, we call it, and it goes out to seven hours and a half. And citronella oil, for example, and some other essential oils will last fine for an hour or maybe two, mm -hmm. but never beyond that. And uh, some of ours are lasting now up out to the seven and a half hours mm -hmm. where CDC and others may uh, consider them as more effective. Okay. Other questions? I'm in the back. Some mosquitoes are resistant to uh, pyrethroids. Could mosquitoes theoretically become resistant to your new repellents as well? Yes. A lot of mosquitoes are repellent to pyrethroids, and in fact, in the southern U.S. after last summer's hurricanes, there were quite a few cases where they uh, didn't really plan on using pyrethroids because of the resistance. And it's well documented now that the pyrethroid-resistant mosquitoes aren't susceptible to the pyrethroid repellents, the clip-on, et such. So 
We're pretty sure ours works at a different site and that the site would not be selected for at uh, least based on the use of pyrethroids or organophosphate insecticides. So it's, of course, feasible that insects can become resistant to anything, so I, you never say never with them. But it's, uh, at this point, ours works very well against uh, pyrethroid-resistant mosquitoes as well as susceptible ones. Okay, any other questions? If not, then thank you very much for joining us. The archived version of the session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACSLive underscore Boston 2018. Please join us for our next press conference at 9.30 today on the environmental cost of contact lenses. Thank you. <laughs>